magical treats taste great, but justice and equality taste better. To combat hate, all ad revenue from My HP Kitchen will be donated to trans and LGBTQ charities. Thank you for supporting the kitchen and helping bake the world a better place. Mischief managed. Hello witches, wizards, and those who have just escaped from Azkaban, welcome back to my Harry Potter kitchen, the YouTube series where we're baking our way through the Harry Potter books, creating recipes for every item of food and drink that we find inside. If you missed last week's recipe where we brewed up Scabbers Rack Tonic Potion, the perfect morning shot or non-alcoholic cocktail, then check out the link down below in the description to catch up. And if you're new to the channel and you don't want to miss a single Harry Potter recipe, then make sure you hit that subscribe button click on notification bell, then you'll get an alert every Magic Monday when there's a brand new recipe for you to try. Speaking of which, it's Magic Monday, so let's make some magic. This week's recipe from the Prisoner of Azkaban can also be found in Chapter 4, The Leaky Cauldron. Harry, Ron and Hermione have headed back to the pub for dinner and met up with the rest of the Weasleys. They're talking about the journey back to Hogwarts as they tucked into a sumptuous chocolate pudding. It's the last supper before the start of term, so let's go out with a bang. Chocolate pudding is on the menu and I am a bit of a self-confessed chocoholic so this week I wanted to go all out and bring you the most fancy dessert we've made on my Harry Potter kitchen so far. If you're having a Harry Potter dinner party this is definitely something you want to pop on the menu. We're going to do a magical version of the chocolate fondant which is a chocolate pudding also referred to as a chocolate lava cake so when you cut into it it's going to ooze out and we're going to go one step further to add in some extra magic and turn these into sorting hat chocolate fondant. So each one is going to have the Hogwarts house colours hidden inside so your guests can cut in and reveal which house they belong to. Better yet, it's super, super easy to make, so I'm gonna walk you through step by step. And first off, we need to create that beautiful chocolate sponge. To make your chocolate fondant, you want to start off by roughly chopping your dark chocolate into small pieces. I'm then gonna add this into a bowl over simmering water along with my butter, and then allow that to melt. Stir that through until it's lovely and smooth. You can then remove from the heat and allow to cool slightly. In a separate bowl, I'm going to crack in my eggs, add in my sugar, and then whisk that through until it's lovely, light and frothy. You can also add in your vanilla at this point too. Once your egg mixture is light and frothy, slowly pour it into the cooled chocolate mixture, folding it through until nice and combined. Once that's nicely incorporated, you can then sieve in your flour and salt. Gently fold this through, trying not to knock out too much air. Once that's all incorporated, I'm then going to prepare my ramekins. And for this, I'm going to spread a nice layer of butter all around the sides and the bottom of my ramekins, and then add in some cocoa. Tap this on the side of your palm, turning the ramekin so you get a lovely coating all around the inside. I'm then going to scoop in my batter, leaving about an inch from the top. You see, I did promise you they're super easy to make, and if you don't want to add the filling, you can bake these just as they are. They will still taste incredible, and you will get that lava flowing inside. But it's my Harry Potter kitchen, so let's add in our Hogwarts house pride. And for this, I'm going to make a white chocolate ganache, which we're going to dye into the four Hogwarts house colours. And you might remember this recipe as we used it earlier on when we made our white hot chocolate bombs. So if you missed that, I do have a little time travelling trick. So let's pop back and see what you missed. Time turner! <laughs> All you need to do is heat up some double cream, chop up some more of your white chocolate, and then separate that into your four bowls. I'm also going to split the cream into four and then dye each into our Hogwarts house colours, whisking until nice and smooth. Pour the hot coloured cream over the chopped chocolate and leave that for about one to two minutes. 
This will help melt the chocolate. So then all you need to do is stir that through until it's nice and smooth. Pop that to one side to cool and allow it to thicken up. I've poured the ganache into molds and then left them in the fridge until they're firm. You then want to take out your firm ganache and roll each colour into a ball. Press each of the balls into the centre of your sponge mixture, making sure your ganache doesn't touch the bottom of the ramekin. The best way to do this is leave the top of the ganache slightly exposed and then use an offset spatula to spoon over the mixture until it's covered. You then want to bake these at 200 degrees Celsius for about 12 to 15 minutes. Okay, so our chocolate fondants are all prepped and ready to hit the oven. It's been pretty easy up to this point, but this is the really crucial step. Some people often get a bit scared by chocolate fondants because if you do overbake them, you'll get a very firm sponge and it won't have that full lava effect. But thankfully, because we're using that white chocolate ganache trick on the inside for our Hogwarts house colours, even if you overbake this one slightly, you'll still get that colour flowing out of your chocolate fondants, which means if this is your first time trying out the recipe, it is great for beginners or experts. Right, it's time to pop them in the oven. We're going to take it a bit at a time, keeping an eye on it. And remember, if you take it out, test it, you can always pop it back in, but it's much harder to try and unbake it, unless you know a good spell. Bake these at 200 degrees Celsius for about 12 to 15 minutes. Keep an eye on them as they bake, as it's really important that you don't overcook them, otherwise you won't get that lovely flowing fondant centre. At this point you can remove them from the oven and allow them to stand for about one to two minutes. You should see the fondants peeling away from the side slightly and they should have a gentle wobble in the centre. You then want to turn them out into your serving dish. As I'm lining all of mine up at once, I've placed my board on top and flipped them over. If you do choose to flip them over one at a time, be very careful and make sure the plate is actually underneath them. I had myself a little fail where I turned it upside down and Ravenclaw ended up spilling all over the kitchen table. Once your fondants are nice and centered, you can then remove the top of the ramekin and they should hold their shape perfectly. And with that, our Hogwarts House Sorting Hat chocolate fondants are complete. You need to serve these warm and take them to the table, allowing your guests to break the top of the fondant and watch as all of those beautiful, bold Hogwarts house colours come pouring out. Whether you get Gryffindor, Slytherin, Ravenclaw or Hufflepuff, these chocolate fondants are going to taste incredible. The Hogwarts house fillings are flowing and our chocolate fondants are ready to wow our guests. Let me know down below in the comments what you think about this recipe. I was so, so happy with how it turned out and I hope you'll give it a go too. If you do, make sure you send it in your pictures on Instagram and tag me at Brand Bakes. That's all for this week's recipe, but if you want to see more from my Harry Potter kitchen, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell, then you'll get an alert next Monday when there's a brand new recipe. I'm going to eat all of these chocolate fondants, so I'll see you next time. <laughs>